Let's take a look at where we are with COVID-19 as the government's proposed date to reopen on the 21st of June gets closer. Is it really possible we're heading for another wave? The Delta variant, previously known as the Indian variant, B1.617.2, is now dominant in the UK. What was looking like steady low case numbers over the last month was in fact a result of two different processes. The Alpha variant decreasing and an exponential growth of the new Delta variant. The combination of these resulted in case numbers which gave false reassurance. The number of people infected with the Delta variant is now doubling each week. Anecdotal reports from India suggest that children are more affected by the Delta variant, which has undoubtedly spread more easily in the UK since children in schools were no longer required to wear protective masks. Additionally, Despite widespread acknowledgement that the virus is airborne and government messaging being changed to hands, face, space and fresh air, no measures have been put in place to improve ventilation in schools. Case rates are now highest in school children. Although children are rarely affected seriously, their education will be disrupted, clinically vulnerable children cannot be vaccinated and the 7-8% instance of long Covid should not be ignored. Despite claims that children do not contribute significantly to community spread, increases in infections are now being seen amongst people in their parents' generation. The vaccination rollout has been a great success. Some of the figures stated about vaccination are however somewhat misleading, as they only consider the adult population and not children who can also be infected and spread disease. They also only state the figures for the first vaccine dose. If we look at the proportion of the total population who have received two doses, the figure is much lower. This is particularly concerning since we know that the protection provided by one dose for the Delta variant is very low. You really need two doses. Levels of immunity normally decrease in the months after vaccination but the overall reduction in vaccine efficiency against the Delta variant to start with, combined with the tendency for older people to respond less strongly to vaccination, suggests that boosters may be required within a few months of a second dose in order to maintain adequate protection. Many of the older people in the UK are already at this stage, leaving them vulnerable. Not only is the Delta variant partly vaccine resistant, UK data suggests that people who are infected are more than twice as likely to need admission to hospital. It is at least 50% more transmissible than the Alpha or Kent variant, which means it's twice as transmissible as the original coronavirus that threw us into lockdown in March 2020. If we do the right things at the right time, lockdown shouldn't be necessary. The UK has always done too little too late, which has meant long lockdowns which nobody wants. Our NHS staff are exhausted, mental health has plummeted, businesses have closed, people aren't getting the treatment they need for other health conditions. However, we don't have to go back to square one like that. Countries where authorities acted hard and fast to suppress the virus are the ones where economies have suffered least and where people have overall been subject to less time in lockdown. But there's another important issue. Every time someone is infected, the virus replicates. Every time the virus replicates, there is the chance of a mutation and a new variant. The last thing we want to do is to compromise the phenomenal efforts made in the vaccination rollout by facilitating the emergence of viruses to which the vaccines offer minimal or no protection. Then we are truly back at square one. The square one that we do need is the ability to control the virus and not just rely on vaccination. The scientists of Independent SAGE have issued an emergency statement asking for six measures to be taken immediately in order to avoid a later lockdown. These include providing financial and practical support to those needing to self-isolate, ensuring minimum standards of ventilation and infection control in all indoor venues, reinstating face coverings in secondary schools and enhancing classroom ventilation, implementing comprehensive border control with managed quarantine, further accelerating vaccine rollout and looking at the possibility of boosters for vulnerable populations, 
and resourcing the global vaccination initiative to control transmission worldwide. 